Hello, you guys. Great evening. What a wonderful evening it is to be back in the presence of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and our personal Messiah and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Um, happy Shabbat or happy preparation day for Shabbat. Um, tonight's message, I'm going to try to try to cap this up, but tonight's message is going to be called the lukewarm church, the lukewarm church, the lukewarm assembly, the lukewarm church, the lukewarm assembly. This is not the time to play around with your belief. This is not the time to play around with the most high and your faith. This is the time to have your faith already grounded and solidified in him. This is not the time to waver between two opinions. This is not the time to not be able to make a clear decision on which way you want to go. You should make up your mind right now which side you're going to be on. We already see that um, those who are trying to push this world into a more darker atmosphere, we see that they're going along in accordance to what they're planning. And so that means that the longer it takes for you to make up your mind on what side you're going to be on, um, your decision has already been made for you because the Most High Yah is looking down at you and he's saying, well, since you can't make up your mind, then I'm going to make up, I'm going to make up your mind for you. And this is the reason why to be lukewarm and to be on the fence is actually more dangerous than being cold. See, those who are cold, they already know they don't believe in the most high yard. They're going to do what they want to do. They're going, they are going to deliberately sin. They are not going to, they're not going to give in to the most high yard's commands. They're not going to surrender. They are not going to submit to him. And so these cold people already know they're ice cold. They are cold for the world. So that means either you're going to be cold for the world or you're going to be on fire for the most high Yah. There is really no in-between. The in-between is the lukewarm. That's lukewarm. So now that's more dangerous than being cold because you can't make up what you can't make up what side you want to be on. In fact, it's being lukewarm and being on the fence that causes people to be demonically uh, oppressed. Do you understand? So, if you can't make up your mind what side you're on now, then it's going to get even more difficult for you to make up your mind as the times get darker. That's why you have to make up your mind now, make a decision. Okay, so now I'm going to have me some assistance tonight. I'm going to I'm going to read some stuff tonight. It's called uh, along with this message entitled The Lukewarm Church or The Lukewarm Assembly. I'm going to read some stuff tonight. This is an article by Bishop Joseph Matera. Um, I like to I like to give a shout out tonight. I found this online, but I like to give a shout out to Kingdom Lifestyle Ministries, Kingdom Lifestyle Ministries.org. And what this is here, um, it's 10 signs, 10 signs you have bowed your knee to bail. Now, I could have came up with my own list of what it means or 10 signs that you have bowed down to Baal, you understand, because, you know, this is what we talk about all the time, but I want to give, I want to, I want to give you guys a list of signs that you have bowed your knee to Baal in accordance to what the kingdom lifestyle ministries have said. And listen, listen, y'all, as you continue to grow and mature in the Most High Yah, do not be ashamed or do not be scared. Do not be apprehensive and skeptical of using other resources because this is the reason why we have the body of Mashiach. We have the body of Mashiach so that we can rely on each other, you understand, to be able to spread this word and to get people to, to be saved. Um, but it's a dangerous time to be on the fence. People think that by not giving their whole entire lives to the world, all right, and not giving everything 
and full submission to the Most High Yah, people think that's a safe zone. People think that's a safe zone because they are neutral, just like their relationships in the world. You know how people say, I'm not in it. You know, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm not taking no sides. They have one friend that they really love. They have a friend that takes care of them. They have a friend that they lean on and rely on and the friend relies on them, right? But then soon as trouble come, soon as persecution come, they say, well, you know, I'm not in it. Well, wait a minute. You're my friend and my friend has opposition. And if I'm your friend, then that means that I ought to be able to pick a side when trouble comes. I ought to be able to pick a side when someone's talking about my friend, when someone is bad mouthing and bad talking my friend, when someone is shunning my friend, when someone is slandering the name and the reputation of my friend, then I ought to be able to choose a side during the time of social or maybe even physical persecution. Well, this is the same thing with the Most High Yah. Well, he's your, he, he is your, he's your heavenly father, right? He, he's the one who blesses you. He's the one that's been protecting you. He's the one that's been healing you. He's the one that's been covering you, right? So now when Satan shows up on the scene and you already know that that's where the war is, it's a spiritual warfare. So if we already know that the Most High Yah is against Satan, then that means that when persecution come or when Satan shows up, you ought to be able to pick a side. You ought to be able to say, you know, not most high automatically. There shouldn't even be no, no speculation. There shouldn't be no hesitation. You already know what side you're on. You know what side you're on. But today in this, in this postmodern society where it's all about culture and styles and trends and hip hop and fashion, it's all about boasting and bragging and money and businesses and looking cute and looking good and muscles and tattoos and diamonds and jewelry and everybody's trying to move up the corporate ladder in white corporate America. Everybody's trying to build their own businesses. Everybody's trying to capitalize in a capitalistic system which is none other than a bail system. And so this is what's causing people to not be able to give their all to the most high because they still trying to figure out how they going to get the blessing of bail. So now listen, so now when persecution comes or when people start talking about you and talking down about you, when there's opportunities presenting themselves by the bail system, then you will hop on that side because you couldn't make up your mind. So as you so you basically have one foot in and one foot out. Well, that's a dangerous place to be because you may be swallowed up quicker by the side of bail before you make up your mind finally that you want to be on the side of the most high. Y'all got to get what I'm saying. And I speak a lot about the bail system because this is the system that we're living in. Every facet of society is in the bail system. Every facet of society. And so here's the thing. When you are in this world, now you are not of this world, but you are in this world because you still have to eat. You still have to work. You still have to pay bills. You got a light bill, water bill, electric bill, car note, house note. You have all these things, life insurance, health insurance. So many of us have children. Now, listen, you have to walk in such a way that your faith is in the most high because the bail system will test you, will put you to the test. You will be put to the test by all of the trickery. You'll be put to the test by all of the benefits that you can get from the bail system. The fun, the entertainment that you can get from the Baal system. Now, Baal was a Canaanite god that the Israelites in ancient Israel failed to. Judah and Israel. Judah and Israel continued to fall to Baal. Now, the reason why they would fall to Baal was because Baal was a Canaanite deity or a Canaanite god of, of sensuality, all right, of fertility and rain. And so when the land dried up, the Israelites would look to Baal to make it rain. 
Do you understand? So that meant that they were looking for their blessings from Baal. And this is the reason why they could never fully submit to the Most High Yah, because they were always looking for blessings from Baal. But they don't realize that the very reason that the land got dried up and the very reason why the sky was shut up and there was no rain in the first place was because they was worshiping Baal. So the same thing that got them the dry land they kept on worshiping. They kept trying to retrieve and obtain blessings. And that caused the lukewarmness. And that's what's causing the lukewarmness now because people can't make up their mind. So with this message now, we know that King Ahab, King Ahab, King Ahab, the seventh king of Israel. Now we know that Israel had all wicked kings. Judah had wicked and righteous kings. But we know that Ahab, he was a co-conspirator of this Baal system during the time of ancient Israel. Now, you do know wherever there's a Baal system, there has to be not only a King Ahab, but there has to be a Jezebel. <laughs> yeah, they got to be a Jezebel somewhere around wherever there is a King Ahab and a Baal system. Because if it hadn't been for King Ahab, then the Baal system would not even have been put in place or established. Now, so this was their political, this is was their political religious system then. See, King Ahab, now the religious came in because of the worshiping of Baal and Asherah, right? But the politics side of it was Ahab being the king, where he was supposed to establish righteousness and establish the law. He was supposed to have kept Israel in line. He was supposed to have kept Israel walking holy and walking righteous towards the Most High Yah and continuing to uh, keep Israel motivated to keep the commands of Abba Yahuwah. But instead, King Ahab, he drew the Israelites away from worshiping and honoring the Most High Yah. And this is how you had the Baal prophets to come about because Ahab. So let's get into this scripture. Let's get into the scripture. First Kings, let's go to First Kings. First Kings chapter 16, verses 29. Now, this assembly that we have today, when you look at the modern or the postmodern church system, when you look at the church system, when you look at Christianity, all of the religions, all of the religions, really, because they all are going to be headed and they're going to be going in the same trajectory as each religion. And that's right on road, right on into this Antichrist B system set up. Because he's going to be the anti-Mashiach is going to be the one world religion. So all of these religions, Christianity included, Christianity actually being the worst one. That's being the worst one. You understand? And, because, and, and the reason why Christianity is the worst one is because that religion was the one that got amalgamated back with the state. What, what am I talking about? Where you know this was the mixture. See, this is the lukewarm, right? So now you have the church. You have the church, which is the assembly. Now the church and the assembly is supposed to be on fire. Right. There's supposed to be no mixture with the clay, no mixture so that the, the church so that the Ruach HaKodesh could be on full blast, full power, meaning that we don't hold back anything, meaning that we say only what the Most High Yah has commissioned us and appointed us to say whatever he says, whatever his word is, then we're going to speak his word. And we don't care about the opposition. We don't care about appeasing the people. We don't care about um. We don't care about the politicians or the politics. We don't care about what they're doing in the higher up, in the higher up, um, the higher up levels of corporate America. We don't care. So see the church, the assembly, the clay was always supposed to stay on fire, untouched, uncut, raw. But what happened was here came the lukewarmness. They mixed right on in with the iron, iron being the state. Iron being the politics, iron being the politics of Rome. But now because we are living in the United States of America, the United States of America is modeled right after Rome. So this is how the church mixed right on in with or the church, the clay mixed right on in with 
the politics, with the state, with the iron. Listen to what I'm saying. And so this is where we got the lukewarmness. This is the reason why the whole system is lukewarm. The whole church system, I would say, is lukewarm. Because once you start mixing in with the world, once you start mixing in with the iron, this is where people start compromising their moral standards. This is where the, the standard of holiness becomes compromised for the world's approval. Y'all got to get what I'm saying. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 16. Verses 29. It says, In the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, king of Yahuda, Ahab, son of Omri, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria over Israel 22 years. Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the eyes of Yahuwah than any of those before him. He not only considered it trivial to commit the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, but he also married Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians. See, now you already know the land or the, the land of the Sidonians and the Phoenicians, that's the land of Ham. You already know that that was a pagan kingdom already to begin with. So it says, um, and began to serve Baal and worship him. See? So the king of Israel, King Ahab, married Jezebel, and they began to worship Baal. They began to worship Baal. So what did he do? Verse 32, he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal. He set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal. Well, this is where you have the church system, and this is where you have the churches and the assemblies, the actual building. See, what we got to realize is that the actual building and the actual temple isn't the church. Is it the assembly? The assembly, the, the assembly is the people. We're the church, the people. The people are the church. The people are the assembly. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what building. So see, the building is only as good or as bad as the people that occupies the building. Catch what I'm saying. That's the reason why in Matthew chapter 18, verses 20, uh, it says that for wherever two or three are gathered in my name, they are and with them. Well, see, that's the assembly right there. So when you get crooked, when you get crooked, corrupted leaders inside of a established building, this is where the corruption comes in. This is where the bell worship happens. See, you can have the building there all you want and the building itself can't do anything. It's not until this building becomes occupied with people and it's the part of the people. It's the spirits of the people. And so once the people get in and they start sinning and they start desecrating the temple and they have these these weird demonic altars set up and they start worshiping and celebrating other deities within this system, this corrupt religious system. This is where you will have the Baal system. This is where you will have Baal being worshiped right amongst the assembly. And this is where the lukewarmness will come in. Now, verse 32, he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal that he built in Samaria. Verse 33, Ahab also made an Asherah pole and did more to provoke Yahuwah, the Elohim of Israel, to anger than did all the kings of Israel before him. So see, by worshiping Baal, so guess what? It's almost to say that worshiping Baal was the worst thing that you could do. Out of all of the kings that came before King Ahab, King Ahab did the worst because of Baal worship. So that means that the heavenly father does not look highly upon at all on Baal worship or towards Baal worship. So listen, because you know why? Because Baal became a system of blessing. Now the most high Yah is the only system of blessing. But then when you get someone else in the play and you start to worship and you start to honor this pagan deity and you start to look at this other foreign God, this foreign pagan God as a source of blessing, financial blessing, spiritual blessing, then you know the Most High Yah is in direct opposition to this deity that you are now worshiping. And this is the Baal system. This whole system has turned into Baal worship of ancient Israel. Now listen, same thing today, like I always say. 
33. Ahab also made an Asherah pole and did more to provoke Yahuwah, the Elohim of Israel, to anger than did all the kings of Israel before him. Now, in Ahab's time, um, Hiel of Bethel rebuilt Jericho. He laid his foundations at the cost of his firstborn son, Abraham, and he set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segub, in accordance with the word of Yahuwah spoken by Joshua, son of Nun. So now, let me, let's stop there. Let's stop there. So now we see that now that this, this Ahab, the King Ahab, the seventh king of Israel, now that he has came together with Jezebel, they have now formed a union of politics and religion. They have now formed a union of politics and religion mixed together. Now, remember, I just told you that Baal was a Canaanite deity that ancient Israel worshipped for blessing, to make it rain, and sensuality, fertility, okay? But then the Asherah pole was set up because, remember, the Asherah pole was involved in illicit sex, sexual practices, illicit sexual practices and temple prostitution. This is what the Asherah pole was all about. The Asherah pole was carved out of wood. Asherah was a goddess of motherhood and fertility and love and war. Well, you got to realize something, y'all. It's the spirit from these statues. It's the spirit from these images that are still looming. They are still looming in every facet of society. People have the spirits. People have this Baal and this Asherah spirit in their homes. People have this Baal and Asherah spirit in at their workplace. It's at the church. It's in the churches. You got to get what I'm saying. Why? Because you have a sexual spirit and you have a system of false blessing everywhere. Did you hear what I said? You have a system of false blessing making it rain from Baal, and also you have the sexual spirit of motherhood, fertility, and also love and war. This is the reason why people can't stay married. It's this Asherah spirit, love and war. One minute you think you love them, and the next minute you're going to war. Well, it's this sexual spirit, and guess what? Neither one of the people that's together love each other, they think they love each other, but it's really lust. But it's this love and this war. Why? It was all based around sex. And so what you find today, just like Ahab and just like Jezebel coming together to form this corrupt system of politics and religion, where you have this in the home as well. You have this in marriages. Because do you not know that there are Ahabs married to Jezebel? You got Ahab that are married to Jezebel. Now, Jezebel would not have existed had it not been for Ahab relinquishing over his masculinity to his woman, to his wicked woman. Get what I'm saying? So this is the reason why Jezebel was able to, this is how she was able to flex her authority. She didn't have no, see, Jezebel has no power unless there's an Ahab. There can be no Jezebel unless there's an Ahab somewhere who sacrifices his masculinity, his authoritative role and headship. And this is what you have today. Now, so just think, they had this false system of blessing over this union of King Ahab and Jezebel, but then you also had this false religion. Now, you had politics, this corrupt politics because of Ahab, but then you also had this false system of religion because of Ahab joining together and building this union with Jezebel. And so now this false religious system is none other than this Baal, this Baal worship and this Asherah, because don't you know today that you have a sexual spirit over politics, a sexual spirit over the church, a sexual spirit over schools, a sexual spirit over homes, and then you have this politics, people get, people start, what do they do? They start corrupting, they start corrupting morality. They start going against the most high's laws. And so now you have the man, you have the laws of mankind now battling against the laws of the most high. Yah. Well, that's the politics. That's the political structure mixing right on in with the corrupted and the pagan false religious system. Now, if you mix both of those together, you get lukewarmness. Hear what I'm saying? Okay.
If you mix both together, you get lukewarmness. And this is what you're looking at. A union. A union of church and state. Is exactly what you're looking at. Politics. Politics and religion. That's what you're looking at. And the whole system has a sexual spirit. Don't you know? Don't you know that beneath the surface, and I would even say up top, once you reach the top, once you reach the pinnacle or the apex of this corrupted political and religious system, there's always sex involved. How do you think people climb up the ladder and get these positions of authority? How do you think people make these nice big, uh, these, these big prodigious salaries? How do you think? Bowing to bail. They bow to the system. They have to bow to bail. There is always someone that influences that influences the powers of Baal by operating through witchcraft. Don't don't forget that a part of this a part of this corrupted system of politics and religion. Don't forget that in the middle of that is witchcraft. See, this is how things get done. It's a spirit of witchcraft that is luring people in. And what it's causing people to do is causing people to sacrifice or causing people to compromise their morality and compromise the commandments of the most high. OK, on the altar of financial gain. Get that. So the reason why people are able to float around, to move around, the reason why people are able to elevate and move up to these top corporate positions, whether it be white corporate America or even the religious system, is sex. I guarantee you somebody's having sex with somebody just to get a position. Well, it's like that everywhere. It's like that in the church and it's like that even in up in politics. And this is where you get the lukewarmness. All right, let me get in here. Ten signs you have bowed your knee to bail. Ten signs you have bowed your knee to bail. Uh, again, again, I'd like to give a shout out to Kingdom Lifestyle Ministries International. Um, I went online and I saw this and I said, wow, this was this was something. This was something. Um, this was something um, valuable in terms of the information that I could extract from this to assist me in this message. Um, so this is why it's important. Get on the most high you side now. A ain't no, don't wait. Cause times are going to get worse. Times are going to heat up. Then you, and you know what? You're going to be confronted with the very thing you've been trying to run away from. See, if you run away from the challenges, if you run away from trial, if you run away from tribulation, if you run away from the hard from, from, from the heart, if you run away from the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, where well, you're going to still have to get it. And what I'm saying is that you won't be prepared for it. So don't run away from the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Why? Because both of them are what you need in order, so, in order for you to gain strength in the most high. This is what you're going to need. So guess what? The only thing that you should be thinking when you meet a challenge head on is to call on the most high right away. Is to use the authority that he has already given you to call things that be not as though they were to operate in him. He gave you all power and authority over the enemy. So that when you run up against something, you should already know where you're where to go to. You should already know your refuge. You should already know your source of power. You should. This is not the time to back down. This is not the time to cower. This is not the time to relax. This is not the time to shut your brain and your mind down and allow Satan's tactics and devices to download in your brain. This is not the time to do that. This is the time to stay armed up. Even when you don't feel like it, you arm up. Okay. Now, listen, this is what. Kingdom Lifestyle Ministries have said, then that this is the uh, 10 signs. You've bowed your knee to bail. So just in case people don't know what bowing your knee to bail means, or people don't know the signs, here it is. Here it is here. It says here, this is the first one. The first sign that you have bowed your knee to bail is you accept you celebrate and teach that Elohim blesses alternative forms of marriage and family that dishonor the Elohim of scripture. Well, that's just what they're doing. When you start honoring, when you start honoring marriages, homosexuality, when you start honoring that foolishness, well, you already know you bowed your knee to bail. Why? Because it's all about financial gain. 
It's all about appeasing to the masses so that people don't look at you like you crazy. People don't look at you like you're not a people person. People don't look at you like you are less than holy. See, you're less than sanctimonious. Well, guess what? You definitely not going to be looked at as sanctimonious if you are dishonoring marriage. If Come on. By allowing, by allowing marriages between those of the same sex to get married. See, now you are, now what you're doing is you are now, you are sacrificing yourself to bail. This is what you're doing. This is exactly what you're doing. I would even say honoring marriages um, of those of, of different sexes and they're not right. Now, why would you honor a marriage between a man and a woman and they're not right? You know, one is an alcoholic and you know, one is a prostitute. Now you shouldn't even be marrying that. But see, you marry that for the money. You marry that so that you could be universal. This is what people do. And so you accept and you celebrate and teach that Elohim blesses alternative forms of marriage. No, and that's wrong. Polygamy is another one. You should not be honoring that. Polygamy or polygyny, however you want to put it, a polygyny is, is one man having multiple women. If you are endorsing that, if you are honoring that, then you are defiling the marriage bed. And this is the type of stuff that's going on. Not this is the stuff that's going on in these in these camps, I would say. See, they honoring that, they honoring that. You see. And maybe not all of them, but I would say there are individuals in these camps that honor that. I can't say all, but I would say there are those who honor that. That's the reason why many have come out of the modern day or the postmodern day church system, the Christianity. They've come out of that because, see, they want to honor their own sexual lust. And so they feel like, OK, but well then I might have to go to I might have to go to a a camp that's not that's not conformed to the system. And then to come to find out that they still conform to the system in one way or another. You still conform to it. You see. So. Now, let's 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 go here now. Now, we know scripture says that a marriage is between one man as the husband and one woman as the wife. So we already see that when people alter that and when people start to honor anything, that anything Outside of Abba Yahuwah's blueprint for marriage, his perfect blueprint for marriage, we see that you have bowed your knee to Baal. Yeah, you have. Listen. Two, this is the second sign. Number two sign that you bowed your knee to Baal. You live out the values of pop culture, even when it collides with the way of Yahushua. You live out pop culture. I, this, this is the reason why you can't come on here playing. You cannot come on here buffooning and coming on here joking and playing and don't come on here with that foolishness. You cannot. You cannot come on here playing that worldly music. You cannot come on here getting up every five minutes and joking and laughing and talking about video games and talking about your lifestyle and talking about frivolous foolishness and topics that you know do not do not coincide or correspond with scripture. You ain't got no time for foolishness. If you want to come on here, then you do not need to be in ministry because you are playing with people's lives when you come on here and you are and you are mixed in with this popular culture. If you're going to mix, if you're going to talk about pop culture, you should be speaking against it. You should not be condoning it because see, it's the popular culture that's got people lukewarm. This the what see. This is the reason why people can't get on fire. This is the reason why people can't live for the most high Yah. They can't fully surrender and submit to them. Popular culture. Pop culture. Gucci and Fendi and Vera and, and come on, and all of the diamonds and all of this foolishness, all the, the TV and the movies and the music and the going out and the clubs and the bars and the alcohol and the weed. And the, this is the reason why people can't get on fire. But then they be the same ones talking about, I love Jesus. Well, yeah, I guess you do love Jesus. And this is the re and yeah, you do. Because we didn't found out now the Most High Yah is allowing us to understand and know that pagan Jesus ain't got nothing to do with Yahushua HaMashiach. Two different figures. 
two different figures. Jesus is, is a whole totally different person than Yahushua HaMashiach. And so, yeah, they can. So this is the reason why you can come on one live and start talking about, you know, twerking and turning up and drinking and smoking and clubbing and doing all the stuff you do in the world and be cussing. And then on the next on the next live, next next live, same breath, be talking about Jesus. Yeah, it's the Jesus spirit that causes people lukewarmness. But see, when you get to Yahushua, ain't none of that. And that's why people don't want, that's why people are fighting it. They're fighting the name and they fighting coming, coming in because they say, no, it's changing them. See, now they know that they're going to have to change. They know that they're going to have to be transformed, see. And, they, and they've been with Jesus for so long and Jesus have, have allowed them to be lawless. That's the reason why Jesus people have done away with the law. You can do what you want to do. See, so it, the lukewarm. Think about it. All your churches, church and state, iron and clay, politics and religion, false religion at that, corrupted politics, false religion, mixed in together, lukewarmness, Jesus. And this is the reason why they lukewarm. That's why. Yeah, but then when you start getting in the word and you start getting in that scripture, you start living that life, the set apart, yeah, it get difficult, don't it? Yeah, good. Congratulations. Because now you walk in the set apart road now. That's right. It's supposed to be hard. That's right. It's supposed to be challenging. It's supposed to put you to the test. Now you can get on fire, though. See, now you can be purified. Now you can get sanctified now. Yeah, yeah. People starting to see when you was on Jesus, you ain't get too much flat because everybody was on him. See? Yeah. That's right. Everybody was on him. At the barbecue, as long as you were saying Jesus, they still was. But then when you start getting in the scripture and you start talking Yahoo and Yahushua Mashiach and you don't celebrate Christmas, I don't celebrate Easter, I don't do no birthdays, I don't do none of that. Oh, now you're going to get the pushback. Folk don't want to be around you. Why? Because now you on fire now. See, before you was lukewarm, you was half in the world and you was half on Jesus. That's just what I'm talking about. See, so. This is the separation now being made. Listen, okay, so yeah, you live out, um, you live out the values of pop culture even when it collides with the way of Yahushua. Now, it says here many church attending, bell bowing believers may not say or preach the wrong thing. You have many that may not preach the wrong thing, but their lifestyle. But their life choices belly and betray the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Y'all, this is the reason why. This is the reason why I watch what I do. I watch what I do. We all know that we have these cell phones and we have these laptops and we have these iPads and these desktop computers. Everything is technological. You already know it don't take but one click and one scroll to roll into some some secular music, roll into a hip hop video, roll into a half naked woman or a half naked man. It doesn't take much but one scroll, one push of a button and you run right into it. You can't escape it. But here's the thing. You don't sit there. You don't fix your eyes on it. You keep it moving. You shut the phone off. I have to do that. Because I can't let all this stuff get in my spirit when I know that I have to teach and preach and study and pray and all of that. Because, see, I know what that stuff is served to do. It's served for you to keep gazing on it and fixing on it till it gets in your spirit. It gets in your mind. It gets in your heart. It gets in your spirit. And now you get weighed down. Why? Because this stuff has a it has an intensity to it that it has this frequency and this intensity because of the excitement and the entertainment. And so the entertainment, it blows you. It means that it starts to, it, it blows your mind so much so that you want that. Now you gain a tolerance. Now you, now you have formed a tolerance for watching the world's entertainment. And now the word looks boring to you. See, the more you gain a tolerance for this entertainment and scrolling, this why why you think they got so much of it on the internet? 
I told you they have these half movie clips. They got old videos, old rap songs, old R&B songs, old movie clips, old TV show clips from the 80s and the 90s. And you sitting there, old basketball games, old football games, old interviews of celebrities. And you just sitting there and you downloading, downloading, scrolling and scrolling. And before you know it, you so way down with the world, you lukewarm. You ain't on fire. Because the goal for the entertainment, the goal, Satan's goal, is to use this entertainment through tech technological means to cause you to be on, to cause you to be lukewarm. It's to extinguish, it's to extinguish the fire of the, of the Ruach inside of you so you can't study, you can't pray, you can't walk in opposition to the world. Come on, y'all. Bell, Bell, lukewarm, the lukewarm church, lukewarm assembly. This is why every five minutes you need some, you can't pray for yourself. You got to have somebody praying. You can't pray. Can't pray. Can y'all pray for me? I see it all the time. They just finished turning up, drinking, showing bottles, how blessed they are. I'm blessed. New, happy new year. Merry, Merry Christmas. Happy new year. Got their little bottles, little Santa hat on. They, oh, they got their 2022 glasses on and they popping the champagne, talking about how the Lord didn't bless them. And now they depressed. Because you're lukewarm. That's why you depressed. Now they need folk to pray for them. Well, I'm having a hard time. Would y'all just pray for me? Man, hold on. Two days ago, you was turning up. I thought you was blessed. Lukewarm. Lukewarm. That's why. Because you're lukewarm. You was just blessed. You was blessed. Had your bottles. You was looking nice. Looking good. Dressed all up. Feeling like a million bucks. Now you're depressed. Two days later, three days later, you're sad, depressed. Now can y'all pray for me? No, we can't pray for you. No. No. Just like just like when Yahoo told Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. Come on. There are times when Yahoo don't pray for them. Don't pray for them. Cause they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they don't really want me. You notice they only want me when they in trouble. They, they either only want me when they want a blessing or they want me when they in trouble. See, they don't, they don't, they don't live a lifestyle of me. They lukewarm. They lukewarm. And no, so no, we can't pray for you. How about you start praying for yourself? How about you start getting yourself right? How about you start getting in the word? How about you start turning down the turn up? Turn down the turn up. See, turn down. Turn down. Why don't you do that? Sit down for a while. Why don't you start doing a lifestyle inventory and why don't you start looking in the mirror, see, at yourself? And why don't you start making some necessary changes? Why don't you sit down for a minute? Why don't you get these people out your ear, out your hair? Why don't you shut your phone down for a while? Why don't you sit down somewhere, close your door, lock your door, shut your blinds up, shut your blinds down, close your blinds, close your window and sit down. Open the scriptures up. Study. And get on fire. See? But y'all want to be lukewarm on the fence. And but y'all want all these blessings. See? And then y'all trying to figure out the reason why y'all lives keep on going up and down, up and down, up and down. And, and, and you can't make no decision. Your mind is clouded. Why you think? Why you think? Folk get, I told you, folk getting sick left and right. You know? And sometimes, I mean, you know, sometimes you're going to get sick. But I'm talking about. We know why the lukewarm believers are getting sick because you lukewarm. That's why. We know why you getting sick. Because you out here at every party. You out here doing everything, trying to be normal. And you don't realize the most high y'all's judging. And you still out here running with the people you've been running with for the last 5, 10, 15 years. Ain't going nowhere. Doing the same thing they've been doing year in and year out. Come on, y'all. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here it is. It says, so yeah, two, you live out the values of pop culture even when it collides with the way of Yahusha. Three, here go three. You are afraid to represent Mashiach in public because of the fear of persecution. When you afraid to talk about Mashiach, see, when you afraid to talk about Mashiach, that would get you, that would make you lukewarm. When people ask you how you doing today, you ought to say, I'm blessed, the most high Yah. You ought, to, you ought to bring him up in your conversation. He should be somewhere in your conversation. You need to bring the scripture up. You know, I was I was out today. I was out today um, at Shopper's Food Warehouse. And I was standing in line behind an older guy. 
And um, he turned around and looked at me and said, man, I got this little, he had a little bottle of juice, a little bottle of ice, right? And he looked back at me and say, man, you know, these prices, man, they just going up, man, and going up. And I said, you know, because they price gouging and you, you know, hyperinflation, you know, the state of this world and this country. And you know that, you know, these people are looking to change over this system. Right. And so we started getting in talking and he told me he started going into the globalists and the secret society. I said, and, and, and we started talking. And we got into talking about the church system. That is actually that conversation today with the older gentleman is actually what motivated me to really do this teaching. At first, I didn't even know what I was going to talk about. But then that motivated me to talk about this because he was saying some stuff like, man, the people that you think are rule in this world. I was told the other day, this is what the older gentleman is saying. He said, I was told the other day that it's somebody over them. They just the family, but it's somebody over them. And we used to start talking. And I said, you know what the problem is? The problem is that, see, here's my opportunity. I said, the problem is, is that, see, the Most High Yah is judging. It, the Bible talks about prophecy, and people are not even looking and listening. And then we start, and now we at the checkout. Now he about to roll, and now I can't even hardly scan my stuff because we talking, because the conversation getting good. Because it's good to run into people that are awakened and know what's happening. And I just, that, that right there made me feel happy today. So, um... He was, then he said something. He said, you know what? Today's generation, they're smarter, but they're weaker. I said, whoa. He said, they're smarter, but they're weaker. And then you know why the reason why today's generation is smarter? But weaker, they smarter because technology. They're smarter because this is the age of information. Remember the uh, the scripture of Daniel? Remember when Daniel said people will go here and there to increase knowledge? Well, this is what people are doing. People are going here and there to increase knowledge. And so what you have now is that people are gaining more knowledge, but they weak. And they weak because they scared. They scared because they ain't got no faith. They ain't got no faith because they don't know the word. So you see, all of that is what's playing into the reason why this younger generation is yeah they're more intelligent yeah they have more knowledge but they weak they weak and they weak cause they lube on they lube on some of them are just atheists some of them don't believe at all they're in witchcraft and all this other stuff and then you have some that are on jesus with all his knowledge and they and that's why they look warm so I was talking to that brother today and he was talking about, and then I start, I start bringing up the church system. I start saying, you know, the re and the reason why people don't really understand what's going on in the world and the financial collapse that's going to happen and the hyperinflation and all the stuff that's going to happen is because you have these pastors on these pulpits and these churches that are not warning the people. And this is church and state. And he said, and the brother, the older, the older dude, he came back and said, he said, yeah, people don't even realize that they're coming back together again. I was like, oh shoot this brother and i said yeah because this is i said not only had not only are they coming back together it's in my belief that they already came back together see they came back together in 1954 by lyndon b johnson who was a senator at the time but then he became president 36 and what he did was he offered to the pastors during that time as a favor of the 501c3 protection. And when he offered them that, what it did was it made them exempt from paying taxes. But see, the thing about it is, is that um, they were already the First Amendment. They were all they, they see. They see. Listen, you got to realize something. They, they already had freedom of religion. They already have freedom of religion, so they did not have to sign back up under anything. But then that is what brought this uh, this church and this state back together again when they did that. But it really wasn't to exempt them from paying taxes. It was to shut them up. It was to silence them about talking about the end time events of what would be happening during the end times. And this is what we have. And so and so because of that, what Lu Wong, this is what we got. Lu Wong. Lukewarm. This is what we got today. Lukewarm, y'all. People still want the world. People still want the world. They want, they want Ahab and they want Jezebel. Okay. Now, it says um here. It says, 
Yeah, you are afraid to represent Mashiach in public because of the fear of persecution. See, you you afraid. You afraid to bring up Mashiach. You afraid to bring up our Heavenly Father. Somebody tell me something. Somebody give me a compliment. I'm quick to say all praises to the Most High Yah. You know, this is your opportunity. What I'm trying to get y'all to understand and see is that this is your opportunity to shine. If you know the Most High is speaking to you, if you know the Most High has sown his word into your heart, if you know that the Most High has awakened you to see what's going on, if the Most High has, has opened your eyes up, if the Most High has done something for you that you know it was no way possible anybody around you could have done anything that, that caused you to be on the up, spiral on the up, then you know it was the most high. Now, the reason why you're here today, the reason why you escaped death, the reason why you escaped prison time, the reason why you escaped sickness, the reason why you were delivered and healed from your sickness, where the doctors told you you had a slight chance of living and surviving, then you better give. You better talk about the most high. This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. Don't fear being shunned by your by your parents or your uncles and aunts and cousins and nieces and nephews and grandmother, grandmama, granddaddy. Man, you hey, listen, your friends, co-workers, let them look at you funny. We're going to the next phase in the spiritual. We're going to the next phase in the spiritual because they're already going to the next phase in the natural. So you better be going to the next phase in the spiritual. And in fact, what's going on in the natural is a direct result of what took place in the spiritual because it's all about agreement. See, agreements are being made and people don't even see the agreements being made. And so this is why people are blinded to the end times. They blinded. They can't even see what's going on around them because everything is so scattered. Their mind is scattered. See, there's two things that scatter the mind, two things that scatter the mind, drugs and prostitution. Yeah, you got to understand what I'm saying. Drugs and prostitution scatters the mind. People drugged up on something. They drinking too much NyQuil. They, they popping pills. They smoking too much, drinking too much drugs. See, it's scattering the mind. And because their mind is scattered, they lukewarm and they don't even know what they're looking at. They don't see, they don't see nothing. They don't see nothing. They don't see nothing. See? So, and prostitution, because people, are, what are they doing? They're prostituting themselves sexually. People are prostituting themselves sexually. People are prostituting themselves financially. You are, you are exploiting, you are, you are allowing yourself to be exploited, but you are prostituting yourself on the altar of financial gain. So you give up some sex for more money. You sacrifice your morality for your for you sacrifice your morality for mammon. You sacrifice your morality for your sexuality. Ah, uh, y'all got to get what I'm saying. And it's all breeding lukewarmness in the assembly because, hey, if the listen, if the assembly can't get it right, if the assembly can't get on fire, the world don't have a chance. We supposed to be the light of the world. We supposed to be the salt of the earth. If we, we supposed to be the salt. We supposed to have good flavoring, but we ain't got no flavor. See, the church and the assembly has lost its flavoring. And so that assault is only good enough to throw out so it could be trampled over. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all. And so now if we ain't looking right, if we ain't dressed right, if we ain't talking right, if we ain't thinking right, if we ain't talking right, then the world ain't got a chance. The world is going to get shot down to hell because we don't, they don't have no, there's no reflection. There's no one reflecting the kingdom. See, lukewarm, lukewarm, lukewarm. This your time to get on fire. You I don't know how you get on fire. You better figure it out. You got the spirit. You got the ruach, don't you? You better figure out how to get on fire. Sometime I, sometime I'll be sitting there and I'll be trying to figure out, man, what, 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 what is, what, what, what do I say? What do I do? You better figure it out. Figure it out. He gave you authority. You'll figure it out. Get on fire. That's your responsibility. That's your, that's not, nobody, that's no one else's responsibility. That's yours to get on fire. See, so that means that it's your responsibility to cut the TV off. It's your responsibility to cut the music off. It's your responsibility to stay in on a Friday and a Saturday night. It's your responsibility to shut down your old phony friends and fake family members. That's your responsibility. That's right. 
That's right. It's your responsibility to fast. Oh, by the way, y'all, Monday, this Monday, we're doing a fast from 12 p.m. noon Monday to 12 a.m. I'll be coming on that night. I will be coming on that night at, shall I say, 9, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. I'll come on 9 p.m. Monday night. Monday night, I'm coming on at 9 p.m. But Monday, it will be from 12 p.m., 12 p.m., 12 noon to 12 a.m. midnight. No food, no water, all right? So I know that this is a short notice, but guess what, though? It was a short notice for those people that got stuck on I-95 in the snow. Oh, it was a short notice. They didn't know they was going to have to spend a night in the car. They didn't know that they was going to have to have their elderly people, their elderly parents and pets and children. They didn't know they was going to have to spend a night. And it wasn't, and they had no food and they had no water. See, they had to fast for a day. Come on, y'all. See, you might be put, see, that was a, that was a sign right there. That you see what could happen when you, when you were left unprepared. Don't you see what happened? But then, thanks be to Abba Yahuwah. A man with an 18 wheeler had a truck load full of bread and fed the people. Ain't that something? Yahuwah came with the manna. Ah, uh, you had to fast for a day, but then Yahuwah came with the manna. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, it's some supernatural stuff going on out here, y'all. And I'm saying this ought to be a sign to people. Uh oh. People didn't. He? Do you know Coco from SWV? Coco, SWV, she was stuck on I 95. Now, come on, you're talking about you're talking about a celebrity, a superstar. She said she had never been through nothing like that in her life. She'd never been through nothing like that in her life. Just imagine they got money and you stuck on I-95. Think about that. Think about it. The most high Yah's moving. He's doing stuff. He's showing people. I mean, you can't do without me. You ain't going to live without me. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. This ain't nothing compared to what's coming. Because what's coming is going to test people's faith. Show enough. It's going to, that's right. It's going to test your fire. It's just, so you better get on fire now. This show time. This show time to shine. Oh, you've been wanting to shine. Oh, you've been wanting to be on front street. Oh, you've been wanting to look cute. You've been wanting to be popular. You've been wanting to be known, seen, and heard. Oh, well, it's your time. Oh, this your time, baby. This your time to shine for the most high Yah. And you better do it. And you better do it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, four. Four. Here you go. You put personal happiness above the will of Elohim. Come on. Ten signs you have bowed your knee to Baal. Fourth one. You put personal happiness above the will of Elohim. Oh, that right there is going to get folk. That one right there alone is what's getting them, was, was getting people the most. They put their own personal happiness before Elohim. Come on. It's what you want to do. It's your life. Your money. It's, it's, it's you. See? Your boyfriend. Your, your marriage. Your, yes, right? It's your fantasy world with your mansion. Yes, right. It's your it's your money. It's your chip amount. Chips, dollars. It's your chip amount, your dollar amount. That's what you can about. It's your own personal happiness. You know, the whatever works for me, whatever works for you, works for you. It's whatever works for you. Yeah, that's it. You put your own personal happiness above doing y'all's work. Luke Wall. Luke Wall. It's not going to turn out right. It ain't going to turn out right for you. I'm telling you. And he's showing people that now. It's not going to turn out right. If you want to keep on going, I told, I, look, I, I'm going to keep on preaching it. So ain't no sense. If you don't like it, then you might as well don't even tune into the Davis ministry because we're going to keep on preaching heavy like this. I'm going to keep on preaching heavy. Yeah, it's going to be praise and worship, but we got to preach heavy now. This if you if if you can't keep up with the momentum and the flow of 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 the of the assembly and what's being taught and preached now, well then it's to your time to sit down. See, don't don't be all don't be sad. Don't be mad. Ain't nobody gonna be mad at your bow. Ain't nobody sad and mad. This your time. It's just like basketball players and football players and rappers and singers and everybody that's up in Hollywood, right? They know when it's their time to sit down. If they can't keep up with the culture and they can't keep up with the styles and the trends, sit down. It's the same thing with these leaders. 
Same thing with these false leaders that don't want to preach nothing, that want to continue to tickle the people's ears. It's your time's over. Your time's up. Sit down. Go on home. Go on home and sit with Jesus. Say, this is your time to sit down now because the way it's going now, the heavy hitters is coming up now. That ain't going to let, they ain't going to hold nothing back. We don't care about, ain't nobody care about no feelings. See, because don't nobody care about what the most high feeling. He been feeling, he been feeling quite bad and sad. Looking down. Thinking that his son, thinking that people are using his son to trample over. Looking at his son as grace, that people can just do what they want to do. Sit down. Now's the time to sit on down. Sit in your rocking chair. That's it. It's okay. I had your congregants every year send you birthday gifts and cards and things like that. You know, go do you do some charity work or whatever you want to do in the community, but get off the pulpit. Get off. Stop preaching if you can't keep up with what's happening, because now we talking prophecy. See, we pass. We pass. You know, stand in one area of the Bible and talking about blessing and comfort and relaxation and love and peace and joy. Now, we do need the fruits of the spirit, but we need to be teaching people. See, it's enough of preaching. See, now, once you have once you are living right or once you have received the spirit, it's supposed to be getting nurtured, meaning that not only are you supposed to be taking the responsibility and the accountability to learn on your own and study on your own and pray and fast on your own. Well, see, the leader, whoever you have above you, they should be they should be adding on to that. They should be encouraging, meaning their word should be heavy enough to make you want to study. The word should be heavy enough to make you want to come out of sin. The word should be heavy enough to keep you on point because the goal or I would say that the, the, the job of a pastor is to do what? Is to lead, feed, and protect and restore broken souls. You should be leading and feeding and protecting and restoring. Leading, feeding, uh, protecting and restoring. Leading, feeding, protecting and restoring. Leading, feeding, protecting, restoring. Preaching, preaching cotton candy, watered down messages that, that just tickle the folks' ears and keep them comfortable that you're not leading them. You're not feeding them and you're not protecting them and you're not restoring them. You're sure not restoring them. What are you restoring them from? See, you need meat. You need solid food. So you need these heavy teachings now. This, this, is, what, this is the system. Because now you need the fire to burn up this mixture of church and state. You need the fire now to come in and burn up this clay and this iron. You, now you need fire to come burn it. You, so that means that you need to be on the side of the Most High Yah on fire to assist him, to be with him, to use the authority, the, the authority that he's given you with the comforter. Now you got Yahushua HaMashiach as the comforter, meaning that you have to, come on, now you got everything you need to be prosperous in the kingdom. You got everything you need to war against this evil demonic spirit, spiritual uh, forces and these in, in spiritual wickedness in high places. You have everything you need to destroy, to destroy hell. You have everything you need to destroy the forces of Satan. You got everything you need. You got, you have, uh, you have the most high, Yah. You have Yahushua HaMashiach who fulfilled the law inside of you. Then you got the full armor. Man, you should, hey, what you afraid of? Oh, you going to lose comfort? No, you ain't never going to lose the comfort. Yahushua HaMashiach, the spirit, the Ruach is your comforter. That's your comforter. That's your comforter right there. So how are you going to lose the comforter if you on fire with the comforter? How are you going to lose your comfortability? Oh, I know, I know. It's your flesh that want to be comfortable. Oh, well, you better get, well, you better, you better, you better go on ahead and forsake that. Forsake that notion of your flesh being your savior and being your comfort zone. You better rely on the spiritual comforter. Listen, so yeah, here it is. Many now, now, now. Of course, this uh, 10 signs of 
bowing your knee to Baal came from, of course, a Christian church, right? But listen to this. I, I, this is kind of interesting that it says this. It says many Christians, here we go, desire above all a life of comfort and ease. Didn't I tell you? They comfort and ease. Comfort and ease. See, I believe that in this Hebraic awakening, where we know that we're watchmen, not Nazarene, and we believe in Yah, Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, and Yahushua Mashiach, our Messiah and Savior, Yahushua who came in his Father's name, Yah, we believe and we understand now that it's got to be heavy. See, we take that. We take it. We understand. We understand it's going to be persecution. We understand it's going to get heavy. We understand the challenges are before us. We understand. See, we understand that we're going to have to walk out on faith. See, we understand that times are going to heat up. We understand that. We know what's coming. We already know what we're facing right now. We see what's happening. We see it. The problem is, is that the system, the political and the religious system, this lukewarm system, this mixture of iron and clay, they can't see what's happening. This and that's what's keeping them comfortable and keeping them wanting to live in comfort and ease is because what they're what they're blinded. They're blinded by the mixture. So because they're blinded by the lukewarmness and the mixture, it keeps them wanting to be comfortable and keeping them want things to be easy. And it keeps them right where they are. So listen, many Christians desire above all a life of comfort and ease. And that's the reason why they own milk. See, they can't come forward to solid food. They don't want solid food. They don't want that. Go with the solid food. Go with that. Go with that. They no, they don't want that. They say, no, no, you because you know what? Listen, listen. You know what? Milk is positive. Solid food is negative. You, you, you're being negative. You're hating. Solid food is negative. Is you're being negative and you're hating. Well, man, I'm giving you solid food. This is a good, hefty meal. It's going to fill you up. It's going to give you muscles. You're going to get your nutrients. You're going to get your spiritual vitamins. No, that's negative. It's negative and hating. That's solid food, right? Milk, mm, it tastes good. That's great. That's positive. Thank you, Jesus. See, when you give them the milk, they want it. It goes down easy, but it ain't giving them nothing. It ain't giving them. They ain't got nothing to fight with, see? And that's the reason why they need you to pray for them. So this is four. This is four. You put personal happiness above the will of Elohim. Many Christians desire above all a life of comfort and ease. Many have falsely. Oh, here we go. Many have falsely been brought into a church with the false claims of the prosperity gospel. You go the kingdom lifestyle ministries. Boy, they hitting it on the, they hitting it on the nail. They hitting the nail on the head with this one. That's it. That's the problem. That's why they look on. Many have falsely been brought into a church with the false claims, false of prosperity. That's the problem right there. False. You're going to have your car. You're going to have your house. Everything, everything's going to be all right. Get, get ready for your restoration and your blessing and it's coming. No, sir. Not if you ain't living right. Not for what we got coming. No, no, no. You can expect famines and plagues and you can expect debacles. Financial loss and collapse and financial failures. That's what you can expect that. That's what you expect that to happen. I'm telling you. So stop with this foolishness. Stop with this. Yeah, the only thing that should be restoring is your spirit, is your soul. Ain't no, ain't no talking about restoring material tangible things if you can't be restored in your mind. See, get that restored first. Get your mind restored. Get your spirit restored. Get your soul restored. See, but they not telling you right. And, and guess what? And getting your soul and your spirit restored means get the negative people out your life. Get these false and get these lukewarm traditions. Get these pagan heathenistic celebrations from out of your mess. Stop with this mix. Stop with this mixing of these religions. Stop with your rotary, your rosary beads. Stop with your rosary beads. Stop with your crosses. Stop with your, stop with your, your reefings. Stop with this stuff. Stop with it. 
Stop with your yoga mat. Stop with it. Stop with your universe. Stop. Stop with the mother earth and the mother universe. Stop with that. With your third eye, stop. See? Cause on Sunday, they with Jesus, but just last night, Saturday, they was yoga. Come on. Come on, y'all. Listen to what I'm saying. I'll take it a step further. Even in this Hebraic awakening, these so-called woke Hebrew Israelites, they talking third eye. They talking masculine and feminine energy. That's that, uh, that's that androgynous spirit. That's that Baphomet androgynous spirit. Black and white. Come on, duality. Masculine and feminine energy. See, so they mixing in. They mixing in. Y'all better, you gotta see. You gotta look at it. Now, the only way you can, now, 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 the only way you can see that, solid food. Solid food. By constant use, you are able to distinguish the difference between good and evil. See, now, if you on milk, you can't see it. And that's the reason why they can't see it. They think that they could do all of the stuff that they're doing and steal Jesus. Well, in a way, you can. Because it's all belonging to one. Don't you see it? It all belongs to one anyway. It belongs to all of them together anyway. So you can believe in Jesus and do yoga and do all the stuff you've been doing. You can do that because it's all in one. And that's what makes it so dangerous. And so you have the lukewarmness all around the assembly because of this religious system. Yes. With all of these pagan religions that are going to be formed into one at the end of the age and pointed directly right to the one world religion. There you go. Okay, so yeah, it says, so, so, this is what it is. Many Christians desire above all a life of comfort and ease. Many have falsely been brought into a church with the false claims of the prosperity gospel. You're going to be out of debt in seven days, and you're going to have your dream lover and your dream husband and dream wife in a year, and you're going to climb up the corporate ladder, and you're going to get you a promotion and a raise and all of this foolishness, and come on. However, however, the moment their quality of life is threatened legally, they will prostate themselves so low before bail, they will clog their nose with the dust of the ground. Did you hear me? Did you hear? However, the moment their quality of life is threatened, legally, they will prostate themselves so low before bail, they will clog their nose with the dust of the ground. That pretty much means that once their comfort is threatened, they will bow down. They'll get on. They'll get on their knees. They'll get on their stomachs. They'll get on their stomachs and they will put their face to the dirt for bail. <laughs> Why? Lukewarm. See, that's what lukewarm will get you. That's what lukewarm will get you. Lukewarm will get you that. And this is why it's dangerous. This is why it's dangerous to be on the fence, y'all. This is the reason why Elijah asked. Israel, ask the prophets of Baal, these, is, these Israelite prophets of Baal, you see, who have bowed their knees to Baal, the 450 prophets of Baal. He Remember, he asked them, how long will y'all waver between two opinions? Now, if it's the Most High Yah that you're going to worship, well, worship him. But if it's Baal you're going to worship, worship him. You can't worship both of them. But guess what? They said nothing. They ain't say nothing. You, you're not going to say nothing. You're not going to say nothing. You're not going to say nothing. Because you're worrying about eating at the table of Jezebel. See, you're, you're eating at the table of Jezebel. Now, why Now why do, now, now, why does these prophets of Baal, why do they sit at the table before Jezebel? Why are they so... Why is it that they are so eager to sit at the table of Jezebel? Why? It's because Jezebel is feeding them. Jezebel is what's feeding them. So if now Jezebel operates from the system of Baal. 
Also, the system of Asherah. This is the political and the religious system that was established between King Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel. You see what I'm saying? So now the prophets of Baal, they were getting full. They were eating good because Jezebel was feeding them because they were speaking the words of Jezebel. So as long as you speak the words of Jezebel, as long as you speak the words of the Baal system, then you will continue to eat good. You'll continue to be full. You will continue to have the itis. Your pockets will continue to be laced. Your bank accounts will continue to be full. But all of the blessings will be coming from Baal and not the Most High Yah. Because as far as the Most High Yah is concerned, your blessings have dried up. The land's dried up. So if you're getting blessed, it ain't from me. It's from this false, corrupted, political and religious system that you are honoring. Here we go. Here we go. It says your desire for happiness causes you to worship Elohim only when convenient, which means you bow to Baal when it's inconvenient. Did you hear what I said? Your desire for happiness causes you to worship Elohim only when it's convenient. See what I'm talking about? You only worship them and celebrate them. You only honor the Most High Yah when it's convenient for you. When it's convenient. When you ain't got to give up nothing. See, when you ain't got to sacrifice nothing. And this is the reason why talk to a bona fide Christian on Jesus, living lukewarm, talk to them about fasting. Talk to them about, about fasting and then see what happens. Oh, no, no, we can't. I can't put down my... See what I'm saying? Talk to them about not had, not living like the world. Oh, they can't do that. Your desire for happiness causes you to worship Elohim only when convenient. Only when it's not going to affect nothing you're doing. Only when your program can continue to go on always as it always has. And people don't realize that your, your system of blessing has been on the Most High. The reason why you was even getting blessed in the first place was because the Most High Yah was allowing it. See, don't the reason why you even getting blessed by Baal is because the Most High Yah is allowing you to get blessed by Baal. Because he can make it the way you get absolutely nothing. Y'all, please get what, please hear that. Now, I didn't, now, you, see, now you see, I done went over somebody's head. The only reason why you're getting blessed by Baal is because the Most High Yah is allowing it for a season. You see, he ain't going to allow it forever. He's allowing it for a season to see if his people going to wake up and realize that, wait a minute, this ain't, this ain't right. This ain't right. Because how in the world can I really be getting blessed by the Most High Yah and I ain't doing nothing he's asking me to do? I ain't keeping his commandments. I'm living, I'm living ratchet. I'm living raggedy. I'm living off the wall. I'm on edge. I'm living in the fast lane. See, this is the reason why. This is the reason why grace is so powerful. Because even the ones that are still getting blessed by Baal, the most high y'all are still allowing it to happen so that people can see. That my grace is sufficient. But now if you don't wake up and see that my grace is sufficient, I'm going to allow all of the blessings that you receive from Baal. I'm going to allow them to disintegrate right before you. I'm going to allow you to lose them overnight. You're going to lose them in a blink of an eye. Yes. And this is what's going to happen. No, no, y'all. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. All the people that have been getting blessed by the bail system, they're going to be losing everything. And the ones who've been waiting on the most high y'all's blessing and his system of blessing, them going to be the ones up. We're going to be the ones up. We're going to be the ones up. And it's not saying that we're not going to go through. No, we're going to go through something. But we're going to have the most high y'all on our side. Because if anybody, if anybody's going to have something in these end times, it's going to be y'all's people. Cause he, cause see, y'all's people gonna have to take care care of the ones who was worshiping Baal, and now their eyes are open. 
But now they ain't got nothing. Now they want the most high y'all. So now they gonna have to rely on the ones that was below them while they was on the bell system. See? See how the tables flip? See how it reciprocates? See how the ones that were up gonna be down and the ones that were down gonna be up? Cause the ones that's up gonna be the ones that was riding in the most high y'all the whole time having nothing of the world. See, we sacrifice partying and celebrating. We heard the voice. We hearkened to the voice of the Most High Yah. We didn't continue to turn our ears off. We didn't continue to turn our heads and eyes the other way. No, we looked and saw what time it was. We saw that he was calling on us. We, we saw that he was calling for us to start to do what he's asking us to do. We see what's happening. And we decided that, wait a minute, we're going to listen. And so this is the reason why as times get times get dire and people start losing, well, the most high y'all's people going to be up. Why? Because he's always going to make sure those who are doing his will going to be all right. They're going to be all right. They're going to be all right. But it's only because you're doing his will. So he's going to make sure you have everything you need to do his will. It makes sense, right? Why would he leave you lacking when you're doing his will? He ain't going to leave you lacking. No, you're going to be get you going to be the one. You're going to be the one because why? He's going to need somebody to take care of those who didn't listen. He's going to need somebody because, you know, you still got to share. That's why I said get your hearts ready to share. Get your. Now, when you talk to people like this in your family, they don't want to hear it. They say, oh, no, because see, Elohim forbid that they got to ask somebody for help. Elohim forbid that out of all the businesses that they done built, Elohim forbid out of the government check that they getting through the mail, out of all the years they put in the federal government, Elohim forbid that they got to rely on somebody to eat. Elohim forbid that they got to rely on somebody couch to lay on, somebody's bed to sleep on. Oh no, they don't see that. So when you talk to them about this type of stuff, they shut their ears and they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to call you. They don't want to text you, but they don't realize that what they're doing is they're shooting them. They're shooting themselves in the foot. They don't even realize that they're the ones that are creating the destruction for themselves by not listening. And in the end, they're going to be the very ones wanting to listen then, but then it's going to be a hard time because then they're going to be, they have, they would have lost everything. They would not have been up in the most high. They would not have been strengthened in their faith. They would not have been able to understand scripture. They wouldn't know nothing. And now they need somebody. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm, I'm, so look, so it says here, yeah, your desire for happiness causes you to worship Elohim only when convenient, which means you bow to Baal when it's inconvenient. See? So when it's inconvenient, you bow to Baal. So when it becomes inconvenient to worship Yahuwah, when it becomes inconvenient to praise his holy name, yeah, when it becomes inconvenient to do that, bail, lukewarm, see? One foot in, one foot out. Can't make up your mind. Here it is. Five, five, ten signs you have bowed your knee to bail. This is the fifth one. You love the praise of men more than the praises of Elohim. You love the praises of men more than you love the praises of Elohim. Come on, y'all. You love the awards. See, you love the award shows. You love that. You love that. Why? Because, you see, people can see you getting the awards. You're the ones getting honored. You, you, get, the, you get the NAACP award. You get awarded from your fraternity and sorority. Now you're getting honored at this dinner, this banquet y'all just had. See, you care more about what your constituents and your friends and co-workers think of, and your business partners think about you than the most high y'all. And that's why you can't be on fire for him. That's why you don't have no love and no desire and no passion for his word. You have no love, no desire. You have no motivation for the things of the kingdom. You have no motivation. You have no desire for the things of Yahuwah. Why? Because you care about men praising you. You care about how you look to people. And you think your good works is what's going to get you in. 
You think your good works is what's going to get you salvation. You think if you do a good, you think if you do good enough, you think if you pass out enough turkeys, you think if you help enough elderly people, if you help enough underprivileged children, you think if you visit enough prisons, enough hospitals, you think if you do enough charitable organizations in your community, you think that's going to get you salvation and it ain't going to get you nothing but the lake of fire. That's what it's going to get you because you said in your lifetime, you was your own God. You came to save folk. See, this is the reason why people won't honor us. Because I told you, we live in a society where people think they gods. They gods. They saving something. No, you ain't saving nothing. You ain't saving nothing. You ain't done nothing. You ain't done nothing. That's why the Bible says that if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. I think that's Galatians like chapter 6, verses 3. If anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, you deceive yourself. You too, sisters. If any one of y'all think y'all something, if you think you something, if they, if he, if she thinks she's something, when she's nothing, she deceives herself. And this is the reason why you got all these selfies and people trying to look all beautiful and they trying to be all glamorous and blinged out and because you think you something, but you're nothing. And you put yourself out here in the world, men and women, both put yourself out here in the world. You project yourself. You see with this, you got your chest stuck out. You got your chest all stuck out. You're walking up. You're walking up to folk like you the best thing smoking out here in the world because you a boss and you, you ain't done nothing. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. That's the reason why I'm not. That's the reason why people's degrees and titles. I'm not impressed. It doesn't do nothing for somebody like me. See, y'all, it doesn't do nothing to me like. You know, really, like I am so unimpressed because I know it don't mean nothing. See, this is when see when you get the Ruach's education. Oh, listen, 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 listen. See, it's better to get the university. It's better to go to the university of the Ruach Akodesh than it is to go to Yale University. See, because Yale University is going to indoctrinate you. The, the, come on. The university of the Ruach Akodesh is going to edify you. So this is the reason why once you get in the word and once you give your life to the most high, Yah, he starts to open you up about the whole thing. He starts to give you knowledge that you can't learn nowhere else but him. Mm. And so now your and so now your your wisdom from the Ruach Akodesh trumps fifty degrees. You can give me ten constituents, ten, ten with two degrees. Oh. Ten. Give me ten of your finest constituents and your scholars with two degrees apiece. Twenty degrees, y'all. Yes, right. That's right. That's right. Give me 10. With two degrees, 20 degrees. The Ruach Akodesh will trump you all day long. Will trump your degrees. Because you can ask, because you can add, you could get 10. You could get 10. You could get 10 fine scholars with their two degrees of indoctrination. Ask them where Negro land is at. They won't be able to tell you what Negro land, what's that? See, but they all got, all of them got degrees. Ask them who made your fraternity, who started your fraternity. Cause you win one, right? I, I don't know nothing about it. I ain't got no degrees. I ain't never went to college. I don't know nothing. But when did your fraternity get started? I don't know. You don't know. What do you mean? You, I thought you had a degree. See, they don't, they can't tell you. But this is the same. This is the same group, the same set of individuals who gave them their honors because of what they did to appease to their fellow brother or sister. And this is why it says your desire. And then that's the reason why it says you five, you love the praise of men more than the praises of Elohim. See, that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong with you. That's what's wrong. And listen, listen to this. You're so insecure. You're so, that's the problem too. That's the reason why people, that's the reason why lukewarm believers in the bail system, that's the reason why insecure. 
They insecure. They, they don't feel good about themselves. They need validation. They need people to validate them. They need people to confirm their existence. They not happy with who the most high made them to be. They, when they look in the mirror, they don't like themselves. They hate themselves. They don't like their accomplishments. That's the reason why people who have bowed their knee to bail and bowed their knee to the false religious and political system. That's the reason why they got to keep busy. Don't y'all see the reason why they got to keep running around doing all of this stuff? They got to keep running around, doing this, doing that, doing here, being here, being here, being there, doing this, doing that. They got to run around like chickens with their head cut off. They're they trying to obtain and achieve and obtain and achieve. And they getting sick and sick and sick. Marriage is failing. Children failing. Everything failing. But they getting money and getting all of these accolades from outside sources. But they dead. They spiritually dead inside. In fact, that's the reason why they keep doing all of this stuff. Because they're looking for something to fill the gap. They need all of these rewards. They need all of the accolades. They need all of the honors. They need all of the trophies and the medals. And they need all of the plaques on the wall to validate them. And they need that as the gap. They need something to fill that empty space. But only Yahushua HaMashiach can fill the empty space. But because they keep denying and rejecting him, these people will always be running and chasing until it's over, till they're dead, and then hell. Yes. Yes. Man is appointed to die once and after that to face judgment. So that means wherever you going, that's your resting place until the final judgment. So now when you die, ain't no do overs. I don't know why people don't realize that. It ain't no you going to see the kingdom and decide that, OK, yes, I see you and I'm in heaven now. No, sir. Because you had all of this time, you had the opportunity, you had the chance, you had your family members, you had people showing you stuff. You 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 were living in the age of information. There was no excuse for you to not know me. The Yahoo were gonna say you you should have known me. You should have known me. You you didn't seek me out. Now you, now you see the kingdom. See, this is the reason why. Don't you see the reason why the Most High put so much emphasis on having faith? Because you can't see. You can't see him. You got to just believe him, but you can't see him. So it's easy to get up there and see the kingdom and say, okay, you know what? I believe you now and in heaven. No. When you had soldiers down here on the front line, sacrificing their comfortability, sacrificing their relaxation, spitting and preaching and teaching this heavy word, edifying the congregation, turning down parties and birthdays and turn ups and turning their lives around, walking the set apart road, having to take the fact, having to take them being shunned by coworkers, old fake friends and family. Family members, they had to take the heat. They had to take the suffering. They had to endure. And you mean it? And, and you mean to tell me it was hard for us to get in? And you just go get before the heavenly Father and start seeing the kingdom and say, "I'm all, I'm in." No, 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 no. Once you go, that's it. Whatever you died doing, that's it. That's it. That's it. You on the torment and judgment side, the hell side, you are being tormented in Sheol. That's where you are. And there's a chasm and a gulf fixed, meaning there's a big barrier, a separation between the blessing and the comfort side and the judgment and the torment side, meaning that wherever you die, you can't cross back over. Ain't no crossing back over. Y'all better get what I'm trying to tell y'all tonight. That's why, don't you see why so, why you think it's dangerous to be lukewarm? Why you think? That's why. That's why. That's why. Here you go. Now, he's saying, so you love the praise of men more than the praise of Elohim. That's the problem. And then you're so insecure that you bow the bell and sell your soul for the affirmation of your co-workers, neighbors, and culture. There you go right there. You're so insecure that you bow to bell and sell your soul for the affirmation of your co-workers, neighbors, and culture. You are a sellout. You you see, don't you see the reason why you got to be sold all the way out to the most high? You got to be sold out. You see, because you gonna, because now you can see, you going to sell out one way or another. Either you going to sell your soul. That's the reason why your soul ought to make its way back to our heavenly father so that you can sell your soul to him. Your soul can be sold out to him because if your soul never makes your way back to the heavenly father, you will sell your soul to Baal. 
If your soul decides to go back to the heavenly father and it stops midway and you decide that you can't make up your mind where your soul wants to go. I don't know. I want the world and I want the most high. Oh, well, guess what? The most high chose your soul for you. You chose Baal because you can't if you don't can't make up your mind, you're lukewarm. It's just that simple. And this is the reason why it's so dangerous. See what I'm saying? Remember what I told y'all. You are a living soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. That means that if your soul, your if your soul doesn't find its way back to the most high Yah, then that means that it's going to find its way to Baal. It's going to find its way to Baal. Because guess what? Your soul has to be sold out either way. So now either you're going to sell your soul to Baal or you're going to sell your soul to the most high. But you ain't got to sell your soul to the most high because he already got it. See, Yahushua HaMashiach already paid for your soul. So why on earth would you sell it to Baal when it's already been bought and paid for? Full price, a price you ain't have to pay. But you're going to pay it in the end for selling it to Baal. You see? See? See why you got to make your mind up? See why you got to make your mind up now? You got to be totally sold out to the Most High Yah. He bought you anyway. I'm sold out. Be sold out. Just be sold out to him. Nights you got to cry. Be sold out to him. Afflicted in pain. Give your soul to the most high. Come on. That's why Mark chapter 8 verses 36 says, What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What does it profit you to gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Well, when you gain the whole world, that's you gaining bail. You gaining bail. And that's the reason why it says you're so insecure you, that you bow to bail and sell your soul for the affirmation of your co-workers, neighbors, and culture. I can add one to your family. Because, see, you can sell your soul out to your family, too. You so connected to your family, you can't break free from them for your own salvation. Ain't that something? As if you can, as if you can hang on their salvation. And they ain't even got salvation. Picture that. You hanging to your family members and they ain't even sold out to the most high y'all. They ain't even been born again. So that you hanging with your family members and they all are consigned to the lake of fire. But you hold on to them because they cool. You hold on to them because you have a good time with them. You hold on to them because y'all buddies. You hold on to them because that's your favorite cousin. You hold on to them for what? Because they got money. Because they can get you in the club for free. Because they got cars. Because they got homes. Because they popular. See, because they can get you instant credibility in a world of secularism and atheism and Satanism and false pagan traditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better let them go. Let them go. On. I preach to you. I teach to you. I teach you the word. But if you don't want to learn that, I ain't got nothing else to say to you. I, we ain't got nothing in common because the word came to separate. But see, the church system, this false political and religious system of lukewarmness, they preach togetherness. Don't hurt nobody feelings. We all got to be coming together as one brotherhood in humanity. We No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we do not. No, we don't. No, we don't. The word came to separate. Word came to separate. Don't forget Matthew chapter 10 verses 34 where they didn't, they, we didn't know nothing about that. Do not suppose that I've come to the earth to bring peace. I did not come to earth to bring peace, but a sword. I come to chop. I come to cut you away from foolishness. I come to set man against his father, daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household, those that's in your family, those that you live with, those that you eat and sleep with. Yeah, them be your enemies. Yeah, but they telling us we need to come together. Now, how are we going to come together? Y'all want to worship Baal. I want to worship the Most High Yah. And this is what you got in this Hebraic awakening. This is what you have. People who are just now, many of our brothers and sisters who have break, who have broke away from family traditions and parties and celebrations and banquets and all of what they do. See, now they're feeling the pain of breaking away. 
You understand? And we need to be there for our brothers and sisters coming in and in, coming into this awakening and this set apart road. They need us. They need help in the body of Mashiach because they can't. They, it's not easy for them to break away because, you know, some people have large families. I'm one that's fortunate enough to have a small family, a small group of relatives where they all scattered, doing their own thing, living in the world. Cool. And guess what? It didn't bother me. It didn't make me no. Never mind. I'm good. I ain't attached to none of that. I ain't attached to no cousin, no uncle, no aunt, no brother. No, I ain't attached to nothing. I ain't attached to none of it. And what I'm saying is that it's, it's more challenging. It's challenging for many of our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters because they have large families. Every year they do this big family get together and cook out and celebration and family reunion. And they all and see it's hard. And that ain't you mean to tell me out of, after all these years, they got to finally break away. Yeah. See, set apart. See, it was all good when you was cooking out together. You was cussing and drinking and smoking and playing cards and Jesus and see, yeah, but now you see and everybody going to church and see, now you can't be around that cussing. They can't be around all that cussing. They can't be around all that smoking. We smoke and cigarette smoke everywhere. Go home smokes, clothes smelling like smoke. You smelling like alcohol. See, you see, you, you can't live that life. Now you got to sit alone now, see? And this is what it is, you see? And so people are looking for affirmation. People are looking for affirmation. And so guess what? People will sell their soul to bail. They'll sell their soul. I had, listen, I've seen where, I've seen where there was somebody in the truth. Listen, they were so called in the truth and they stopped posting. Stop posting. Stop. Don't see him in action no more. They celebrating Christmas. Don't see him in action no more. They celebrating Christmas. They on Christmas. See, the pressure got hot because see the whole family celebrates Christmas. And so guess what? They had to go back to the bell because it got it got hot. They ain't want to be alone. They had to be affirmed by their family members and children. Got to get gifts for the children. Got to do it for the kids. So that so 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 what you mean to tell me is that you're going to sacrifice your children to Molech, sacrifice your children to Nimrod. For what? For gifts that you can get them all year around that you can get them any day. You can buy your children gifts on any day of the week. But you got to do it when the heathens do it. You got to do it right dead middle. In a celebration of these pagan gods that the Most High Yah said, do not worship, do not celebrate. And at first we didn't know it. Now, see, we didn't know it all these years. OK, well, then that's where we had grace. But now, but now, remember, at one time, the Most High Yah winked at our ignorance. But now there comes a time when all men must repent. Well, see, that's what, we, that's what we're doing now. That's where we are now. So that means to tell me, well, wait, wait a minute. You know the origin of Christmas? You know the celebration of it? You know what they used to do around the time of Christmas? And then you talked all year long about Yah? And now Christmas come? And now I see you up with the tree? I see you with the gifts? Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, I understand, you know, but look, this is the cost. Remember, remember y'all, I did the message, count the cost. See, this is the cost that you got to count. You got to count the cost. You got to count the cost. I'm, you know, you got to count the cost. Got to count the calls. You got to count the call. Because cause look, just think about it. If you speak in Yah and you're trying to get your family members on Yah and you live in a set apart life, right? And you're trying to convince them and it's already hard to convince them. Well, what's, what's going to happen when you finally give in to the pagan celebrations? They're going to look at you like, oh, you a phony. They ain't going to want to hear nothing from you again about the Most High Yah. You better not come with a scripture. We don't want to hear that foolishness. You celebrating what we celebrating. That's the reason why it's dangerous to be lukewarm. Because when you try to come back with the word, they ain't going to want to hear you. They ain't going to respect you. They ain't going to respect your walk. You ain't, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't set apart. 
That's the reason why you can't go there with them. You got to stand your ground. You got to stand your ground. I'm not celebrating that. I won't be there. The, the day is a sunny day. I, you know, come on now, y'all. The summertime, summertime, summertime. Summertime is hot. People got the drop tops down. You see? The women, the girls, and they daisy dukes and short skirts, and the men out with the tank tops, white beaters with the tattoos, and all you smell is barbecues all in the air. It's a nice 85 degree day, cookouts going on, and you and you know what they gonna be doing. You know what they doing over there. You know what they doing. And that be the time where you gotta just have your own little celebration with you and your family in the word. See, set apart. You got to be set apart because if you show up doing the same thing you used to do with them, they will not respect your walk. You'll be lukewarm. And, the re you know, and you know why you would be doing it? Because you are insecure and you are looking for affirmation from your friends. This not saying that you can't live life and you can't have fun and you can't barbecue. I'm not saying none of that, but you got to do it set apart. Don't do it with the same people you was turning up with. Don't do it with the same people you used to go out with. Don't do it with the same people. Why? Because they're not going to respect you. You have to be an example. You got to make them want to come where you are. You got to make them want to line their lives up with the most high y'all just like you did. That's why I set apart. That's why the road is narrow, meaning that we can't walk together down. The, that means that we got to go by ourselves, meaning that my walk and my individual relationship and my salvation ain't contingent upon your walk and your salvation and your relationship. That means I got to have one. You got to have one. Everybody got to have their own. You can't ride off mine. I can't ride off yours. We got to walk down this junk together, but by ourselves. But if you want to come into the word, if you want to learn about the most high, yes, we can do that. But we got, we're going to be set, we're going to be set apart with this. That means we're not going to do what everybody else is doing. And you got to be okay with that. That means that you got to count the cost. You got to count the cost. That means that before you even get in, you got to count. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If I go this way, I know that they're going to hate me. I know that I ain't going to be able to do this. I know. Well, you got to count that. If you ain't ready, don't even jump on. Don't even do it. You ain't ready yet. Okay. Pray. Pray that the Most High continue to work on you and all that. But don't jump and be big boy and big girl and you already know that you ain't ready. See, you got to count the cost. Because the worst thing to do is to get in and to play like you are serious about it. And the Most High know your heart. And then you turn back around and you denounce everything. You see? And I ain't, and I'm not, I'm talking about you was out that joint cutting and slashing with the word too. We ain't talking about like you was, you know, you just got in the walk and you was a baby and you, no, nah, you got in the walk and you was quoting scripture and you was slashing and cutting with the word and you was denouncing and you was renouncing pagan celebrations. And then all of a sudden you in it, the most high guy, he going to look at you crazy. He, 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 he. You gonna you might get a judgment for that, and the reason that is is because you can't play with him like that because he got people that he trying to convict. He got people that he's looking to straighten up, and you getting in the way. Now people won't even take him serious because somebody like you that's supposed to be representing the kingdom, you ain't representing the kingdom. You representing Baal, and that's messing folk up. And the Most High Yah doesn't look at that right. He doesn't look at that right. So if you're gonna be set apart, be set apart. And, and deal with it because you already was partying. I mean, come on. Didn't you already have the world? Wasn't you already out there doing what you was doing? You was already doing it. I mean, how many more years time to grow up? This is the, this is what I'm talking about. See, now it's time to grow up. And I ain't just talking about being on milk in the word. I'm talking about being on milk in the world. See, y'all still on milk. You still worldly. You still got a worldly mindset. You still carnal. You can't get on fire. You can't. And see, this is the type of stuff that's going to cause people to miss him when he come. This is the reason why you do not know the day, nor the hour, nor the time that he come and returns. Because if you would have known that, then you would have kept awake. Then you would have kept on God. You see what I'm saying? So, listen, it says, um, yeah, okay, where we are, we are, 
Let me read this. Let me read this. It says the apostle John illustrated your life when he wrote that many of the rulers among the Jews believed in Yahushua, but were afraid to confess him because they loved the praises of men more than the approval of Elohim. Furthermore, the apostle James said that friendship with the world. Here we go. James chapter four, verses four. Friendship, you adulterers and adulteresses. Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with Yah? See, you got to know that friendship with the world, you become an enemy of the most high Yah. I know that they don't they ain't tell y'all that. I know because see the church, the church system, the bail system, the religious system is to get you operating in the world. It's to take Jesus to the world, but to operate in the world like the rest of the people. But see, when you do that, you become an enemy. You become an enemy of Yah. So instead of, instead of the edification on being set apart from the world, they are teaching you and preaching you into the world. Because guess what? It's to keep the bail system running. They know if they continue to get you to go out in the world by promising you blessing, the bail system, right? The bail system is to promise you false blessing. So they keep you wanting to operate in the world so you can make money, so you can give it right back to the bail system. So you Don't you see how it's a... It's, it's almost like a conveyor belt. It's a conveyor belt. You go to work, you make money, you stay out in the world, you get your money. You see, you denounce and reject your haters because that's what they preach in the church. See, your haters are trying to stop you from getting your money. Your haters. Nah, nah, look. Nah, your haters are really stopping you from, from connecting with the most high. Yeah. See, but, but you see what I'm saying? So the bail system... The bail religious system is to promise you false prosperity, false blessing. So when you get the blessings, you think it comes from the most high Yah, but it's coming from bail. And then you go out in the world and you make the money and you do everything out in the world to get you this material blessing in which money can buy you and to get more money only to go back to the same bail temples to pay the bail temple. Because see, they got to keep the system running too. They got to keep the religious system them running until the end. So it's to get you motivated to go work, to go get money, to live in sin, to come back to the bail system, give your money. But guess what? You're ever learning, but you're never able to come to the knowledge and the truth. You know, you learn all of this stuff, but you don't know nothing. You know all of this stuff. You're learning, but you don't know nothing. You don't know the truth. <clears throat> you learning, but you don't even know you the children of Israel. You learning, but you don't know nothing about Baal and the Jezebel and the Asherah and the Ashereth and the Ishtar and the Nimrod is still being propagated in the system today. You don't know that. See, you don't you still don't learn nothing. You don't know what you're doing. And that's the reason why you go right out and you touch the same satanic stuff that you've been touching and you don't even see it. And you don't even see it. Come on. I'm, 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 here we go. No, so he says, now, furthermore, the apostle James said that friendship with the world is to be at enmity with Elohim. See, in your desire to appease the world, you unfriend, you unfriend Elohim and you friend Baal. See, in your desire to appease to the world, you unfriend Yahuwah. You unfriend them. Just like you unfriend people on Facebook when they don't say what you want them to say, you unfriend them. And then you go friend Baal. You unfriend Yahuwah and you friend Baal. That's what, folk, that's what folk do. Yet though, God blessed them. Ain't that something? They unfriend. They unfriend our Heavenly Father, but then when they get blessed, the Heavenly Father blessed them. See? I guess that's the convenient part right there. I guess that was the convenient part. Now you now you back on God's side now because you bless. But then when you wasn't doing good and when it seemed like the blessings wasn't coming, then you go back to Baal. And see, that's the lukewarm. That's lukewarm. And that's the reason why our Heavenly Father in this infinite wisdom, that is the reason why he did not allow his name to be his, his name to be surfaced. That's the reason why he didn't allow his name to come up all this time. Don't you know, I, if I, I was one day, we was, I was in the bed and, you know, 
um, my wife and I, she was scrolling through some you know, some movies because, you know, sometimes, you know, she I be, we trying to look for some clean movies. Ain't no clean movies. But I noticed something in these movies because, see, when we look at movies or when I do and I don't even look at movies like that. But I'm saying sometimes she'll be passing. She'll be scrolling and and I, you know, and then I get back into reading or whatever. But I, I sometimes I look at the movie because I'll be trying to see some stuff. I'll be looking for symbolism. I'll be looking for symbolism and I'll be looking for stuff they put into the movies. Do you want to know what I notice about these movies? Guess what they always say? They say Jesus. They say Jesus. Look, Billy, good Jesus. They, all, they use Jesus as a cuss word. Then when I looked at it, I said, now see, that is the reason why the Most High Yah did not allow his name to be surfaced. Every time I see it, Jesus. They always said, you got Jesus Christ. Yo, do you know how many movies they use Jesus Christ? Now you got to think about it. They put it in the script to say Jesus Christ. Why do they do that? It made me look at that like, wait, this is deep. This is deep. That was in the script. Jesus Christ. Right before a cuss word, right before or after a cuss word, Jesus Christ. Why do they keep saying that? And all this time we thinking that they're blaspheming our Savior's name, come to find out they ain't even our Savior's name. Come to find out they ain't even our Mashiach's name. All glory and praises to the Most High Yah. See, he kept his name hidden. He said, these idiots, these fools, Hollywood will not blaspheme my name. Because when they start doing that, oh, it's destruction time then. So guess what? Y'all can say God and you can say Jesus. And that's what they've been doing. I'm trying to tell y'all. I get another one. I swear to God, Jesus Christ. Ain't that what they do in the movies? I swear to God, I will kill you, Billy. And they using God. Jesus Christ. I'd be like. She joined. And come to find out, they ain't even his name. His name ain't God. Our Heavenly Father's name ain't God. And our Mashiach's name ain't Jesus. They've been blaspheming it. And you notice, it's all satanic, it's all lukewarm, it's all mixed up with this false political, religious, and entertainment system. I'm telling y'all. And I, th now, that's the reason why now I'm catching stuff. See, like these old 80s and 90s and 2000 movies. Now you start to pick up and see stuff that you didn't see before the Most High Yah awakened you. And this is the reason why he woke you up so you can see the evil. You can see the wickedness. And now, you know, don't even pay it. Don't even tune in. Nah, don't even tune in. Don't ain't no sense in tuning in now because you already know about it now. So I, but I see, I saw that. I just had to put that out there, y'all. But don't you see the reason why we don't use Jesus Christ and God and Lord? We don't do that. Cause they, oh Lord have mercy. There go another one. Lord have mercy. I swear to God, Jesus Christ. All in the script. It's in the movie scripts. It's written in lyrics. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, y'all witchcraft and the whole time you go to church on Sunday worshiping God Lord and Jesus and you just finished watching a movie where they was cussing sexing drugging shooting and they were saying swear to God Jesus Christ Lord have mercy the whole movie and then they got these false fake church scenes where they got this lukewarm pastor in these movies. You see how they buffoon the church in these movies and these especially these black movies, these black enterprises. You see how they do that? They do it all. You see that? They make a mockery. They make a mockery of the church in these movies, in these black movies and these TV shows. Yes, they do. And these music videos, they make a mockery. And they get these satanic, they get these satanic rappers, these satanic R&B singers to get them to play the role of a pastor in these movies, buffooning the church. And they get up there and say, uh-huh, thank you, Jesus. And they tune up the organ and all of that. See, they, see how they buffooning the church with God, Lord, and Jesus? 
And the most high y'all looking down at this foolishness saying, I'm going to destroy this place. I'm going to destroy this place. Just like he did with Solomon and Gomorrah. I'm going to destroy this place. I'm going to destroy this place. Just because y'all thought y'all was talking about me, I'm going to destroy this place. Come to find out. Come to find out. Ain't got nothing to do with the most high y'all. Don't you see the separation? That's lukewarm. Bail system. The bail system. Now can you see? We trying to figure out in all these 80s and 90s movies, why is always a priest? Why is there always a priest called father and a confession booth in a Roman Catholic church? Why is that? Why do all these movies got these big cathedral churches? Why? Why do we see that? Now you see. Now you see, because they're trying to get in people's mind. What are they trying to get in your mind? The false religious system. They're trying to get in your mind. This bail system of religion and politics. Don't you, you ever notice that? It's always a scene with a lawyer and law enforcement, a judge. And then on another scene, there's a church. There's a lukewarm pastor with the cross on his robe. Don't y'all see? The bail system, church and state, iron and clay mixed together. Lukewarm. Here we go. Six. Six. Let me speed through this. Let me speed through this so I can get done. Because I got some other stuff. I got some other. I got another scripture I want to go to. Uh, six. Ten signs you have bowed your knee to bail. Six. You lack a biblical worldview. You lack a biblical worldview. You lack it. The only scripture you know is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But then when I, st but then when I talk about Obadiah, see, but then when I bring up scriptures on end time prophecy, when I start talking about Revelation, see, when I start talking about the book of Daniel, you don't even, you, you lack a biblical worldview. When I say prophecy, see, I'm negative. I'm being negative again. Why? Because y'all on milk. And when I start going to Daniel and Revelation and I start talking about the statue and I start talking about the four beasts and we start getting in to Zechariah and the prophets, you, you, you lose on. You, you don't know. You lack a biblical worldview. You can't see that the Bible is prophecy. You can't see that it's history. You can't see that it's geography and genealogy. All you know the Bible to be, all you know the scripture to be is um, prosperity teachings and prosperity gospel. All you know scripture to be um, are feel good, um, inspirational teachings, inspirational quotes. That's what you know the Bible as. And so because you just think of it like that, because that's what you was indoctrinated with, and that's what you teach the congregation and the lost sheep, you lack a biblical worldview. You are lukewarm. You have bowed your knee to Baal. And you don't even go to the scriptures that talk about Baal. You don't even go to the scriptures that talk about the queen of heaven, talk about Tammuz. All of this stuff is in scripture and don't nobody say nothing about it. They don't say nothing about it. And this is the stuff that's tacking, that's, that's, that's attacking the people. This is the stuff that's tan y'all's behinds up. You can't even see it because they don't never say, they don't never talk about it. They don't say, they don't say nothing about it. They don't talk about it. They don't even allude to it. Anytime they go to the Old Testament, they pull up a scripture of blessing in the Old Testament. They pull up a scripture of blessing in the Old Testament. Hold up, but they don't say that we didn't get the blessing. They don't say that. They don't say we didn't get the blessing because we kept on turning our backs on the Most High Y'all's commandments. They don't say that. See, say that. Say that part. Say that y'all heathens are the same stiff-necked, rebellious Israelites today. The same thing they would do. not say that. But you don't say that because you lack a biblical worldview. You lukewarm. You only want to tickle the people's ears. You only want to keep the money coming in and flowing in the bail system to keep everybody sleep, to keep everybody lost sheep, to keep everybody walking down the road to destruction off a cliff head first. And the people walk around thinking they going to heaven, thinking they thinking they saved, but they don't even realize that you are selling them a one way ticket to hell every Sunday and they steadily giving up their money. And you ain't teaching them nothing. You understand. And this is what's wrong. You lack a biblical worldview. Here you go. 
your view of reality and truth is shaped more by secular culture than the scriptures. See, people's worldview is shaped by secularism and shaped by the culture than it is the scripture. That's the reason why when you go to scripture, they, they don't know what you're talking about. They, you know what they tell you? That's, that's your belief. No, that's what the scriptures say. That's what the scriptures say. It's just that you stay on, you stay one-sided. You stay only on the comfort and the blessing and the prosperity and the harvest and the breakthrough. So you stay on that. You stay on faith and grace and love. That's what you stay on. So you stay on that. So because you stay on that and you don't know the whole scriptures, you don't you see, see, you have not had the word rightly divided. That's the reason why. So when I come to you with these other scriptures, you tell me it's my opinion as opposed to it being the word of the most high Yah. How is this my opinion? And I'm reading you scripture and I'm telling you what the scripture says. Oh, it's my opinion. No, it's your opinion that you saying that I'm not reading the word. That's your opinion. Your opinion is that I'm not reading right. I'm not interpreting the scripture right. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. So see, I don't mind ruffling feathers. I don't mind. That's my job. I, I, I love the job. I, I take it. I embrace it. I embrace it. You need that. See, y'all need to get your feelings hurt. You need to get convicted. You need, you need it. We all need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. I ain't above it. I need it. So if I need it, I'm going to cut you too. Why don't we both get a cutting together? Why can't we both just get cut together? See, the reason why I can offend you is because I've already been offended. Because, see, this is the reason why, when, see, when you start getting to this level and you start teaching and preaching this way, it, the reason why I ain't, see, 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 the reason why I'm unharmed, the reason why my feelings ain't hurt, the reason why I ain't in my feelings, the reason why I ain't mad, I ain't got attitude is because I done already been through the attitudes. I done already got convicted. I done already been mad. I done already had an attitude. See, the word done already cut me and burnt me up real good. So now, let somebody else get the cutting and the burning. Let somebody else get it now. So don't think that I'm trying to cut your fun. Don't think that I'm trying to spoil your little party. No, I'm trying to wake you up from your slumber so you can see it ain't no party. And so you can see there is one big party and you ain't in it. There's one big party and you ain't celebrating with them. There's one club and you ain't a part of it. And then as long as you still sleep, you won't see that. So the word is here to cut you so you can see. The word is here as a big bucket of ice. It's a big bucket of water to wake your behind up. It's a torch. It's a flame to, to burn you up, to get you up, to get you thinking. Listen. So your view of reality and truth is shaped more by secular culture than the scriptures. See, they look at these movies with these false churches and these false pastors and they look at that and they see the old grandmama with that big old hat and the, her daughter and notice they ain't got no father, ain't no husband there for neither one of them. You got the grandmother, you got the mother with the big old hat and then you got the daughter looking like a whore and they in church in this lukewarm church on a movie, in a black movie at that with the lukewarm pastor on the pulpit see it's always a rapper too they always get one of these satanic freemason rappers to get on these movies in these churches on the pulpit and then they get them and they be buffooning and then you see the mother and you see the daughter and ain't now one of them got no man they ain't got no husband why? Because the false church system caters to the women because the women are the one that pays the church system to keep bail operating keep bail operating See, they got to keep the bell and the Asherah going, see? And so now you got the sexual spirit over the church, over the women, over the children, over the men, because the men are halfway, they dipping too, they dipping in and out the sauce. They one minute want to be with a man, and then the next they want to be with a woman. So you see, <sighs> come on, y'all. So you listen. Uh, it says your view of reality and truth is shaped more by secular culture than the scriptures. As a matter of fact, your lifestyle choices demonstrate that you lift the views. You lift the values, views and vision of secular culture above the word of Elohim. See, y'all care. They people care more about Hollywood and entertainment than they do about the word. You could tell this is where they hold their view. They hold their view. They hold their their biblical worldview is shaped by the world of secularism and entertainment and culture and culturalism. 
And so this is the reason why they can't get on fire. See, they can't get they can't get on fire. They can't get on fire. And so it says, listen, and so it says, um, one day while the world and its Baal worshipers are licking the dust in disgrace, those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars in the firmament. Oh, hallelujah. Did y'all just catch that? It says, while the world and its Baal worshipers are licking the dust in disgrace, those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars in the firmament. So this is, remember I told y'all that as we get closer to the end, as we get closer to this world being dark and demonic, those who got the Ruach will start to shine. We'll start to have a glow about ourselves. We'll be shining like the stars in the firmament. And the ones who are worshiping Baal, they'll be in disgrace and shame, licking the dust like the false leaders. The false leaders. Because in the end, they're going to be ashamed. They're going to be ashamed in the end. They're going to have, they, they, their heads are going to be held low. They ain't even going to be able to look not one of their congregants in the face. They're not going to be, they had a, they got a church of 50,000 now, but when this all come down and they got to bite the dust because they've been celebrating and worshiping and honoring Baal and leading their congregations to Baal all this time. In the end, when ain't no Baal temples left, when ain't none of the false promises of blessing is left, when Jesus don't show up on the scene and they ain't raptured up, these false pastors, these false apostles go ahead and head hanging low. They ain't going to be able to look at one of their congregants and lost sheep in the face. They ain't gonna have no answers. They ain't gonna have no food. They ain't gonna have nothing. They ain't, they gonna be done lost everything. Then that's when the war's gonna start up. People gonna start going against the leaders. I'm telling y'all better get what I'm saying. And this is what's happening. This is what we're looking at now. Get on fire now. Get on fire now. Look, then, then it says, uh, look, and then, then it says that, so yeah, while the world and his bell worshippers are licking the dust in disgrace, those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars in the firmament. Uh-huh. Listen, your ignorance, your ignorance, willful, willful ignorance, because there's no need to be ignorant now. 